Hola, Lights Out Faithful, and welcome to another edition of the Lights Out Podcast. Uh, this is episode number 75, okay, and me and my fellow amigos are very excited to discuss what I'm sure you all spectated over this past weekend. It was a amazing showing from MK Leo, and you know, for my money, the GOAT is back, but he never really left, but we'll get to that momentarily. I want to catch up uh, with these two gentlemen who uh, also watched the tournament and seem to have screwed their sleeping schedules up a little bit. Guys, how are things going over there? Thanks for being awake. Bro, I am so tired from staying over this tournament. The tournament was like three days ago now, but I have not recovered from that. I am still wake, like waking up at like 3 p.m. Oof. and sleeping like at 6 because that's when the tournament ended. So, yeah. Wow. Completely yeah. scuffed. I mean, that's honestly been the exact same for me. I wouldn't even say it's because of the tournament. That's just how my sleep schedule has been for the past week. Okay. Well, fair enough. I mean, you I mean, you guys have been kind of going over a little bit. You Cosmos, you're not at your actual house. You know what I'm saying? So I guess how long are you in Ohio for, by the way? I'm actually leaving tomorrow. So oh, okay. tomorrow tomorrow at six AM I'm flying back to Mexico. All right. Back to the body hills. I like it. And light. I know you had a uh good start to your week. I think you won a, another local yesterday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, still competing all the time. Uh, Ling Ling just recently started going back to the locals, which has been doing wonders for me, honestly. it's. I feel like when I play him, I like remember a lot of stuff because he's just a really good player. So hopefully he keeps going to stuff because it's just helping a lot. Yeah, I, I saw that clip against the Bowser Jr. That's the only thing I saw. That was like four days ago, five days ago. Mm, oh, was it? He, yeah. he, he posted it like yesterday or two days ago. Yeah, that was like yeah, it was like on Saturday or something like that. And I won, if it makes you a bit. Yeah, I, I was like, you still won that set, right? Obviously. Yeah, that's just what happens. Yeah. Well, good stuff on the W, my guy. Obviously, you know. Shout out to that mega guy, too. I liked his I, I That was fun to watch. He's pretty good. Yeah, for sure. But you know who's pretty great? You know who's outstanding? You know who's beyond reproach? Yeah, this guy, too. Absolutely. You can't even right. tell him to get him out. He pays the rent. <laughs> Are you asking me? Because you know what? I know the answer to that. The one who is oh. amazing is Zachary. Yes. Zachary. Every single tournament he attends, he probably doesn't even practice, but he always gets top eight and top four in that. Bro, I was saying the same thing. I'm same, convinced bro. that he is just Japanese Nairo in the sense where he just does not <laughs> practice this game. Dark he game. only practices when he's streaming. And then he just shows up oh, in top four's really events. Close. Like, yeah. what? See, but I don't even think I can call him Japanese Naro because, like, whenever Naro was still playing, he was still playing Elite Smash, like, almost every single day. Yeah. But this guy, like, stream- he still, like, makes YouTube videos and streams. Oh, well, actually, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. No, he's a, right. He, bro, he's a content right. creator. I feel like a lot of people forget that. Like, he's a popular content creator. He's also you know? legitimately famous in Japan. Like, when he goes to an event, it's, like, a spectacle. Like, he is... He is not just like a talented creator or co- like or player like this month. Like he, get, Zach Gray gets bitches. Let's just call it what it is. All right, Bro, well, Zach Gray puts it down. You know who else is famous when they walk through the Pac-Man. door? Abadongo and sh- <laughs> Abadongo and shout out to him being there. I was so happy to see Abadongo there. I love seeing Abadongo. He was there. Yeah. All right. Those are both goats. Yeah. Both Listen, all right. Goats. Yeah. You yeah, you got no respect. I have plenty of respect for, the- for Abadango. I was there at that pound that he won in twenty sixteen. It was amazing. I'm just saying I didn't see him at all. That's all. Damn, bro. You just use history against me. How dare you? Well, you know, I'm quite prepared. As Zachary was too. You know, the thing that caught me off guard with Zachary was the fact that he elected to go with the Rob the majority of his games. Goat stuff, by the way. Like I was actually quite surprised, quite taken aback, if you will. Because I was expecting a lot of pit and dark pit, but it was like, I'd say 80% Rob on that. And maybe that is a byproduct of like he just went into the tournament and had not practiced at all. Because if you watch this set against Kome, it's like, what the hell's going on? Like, bro got cooked. And then he makes a historic loser's run all the way to fourth place. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, I feel like Zachary does kind of have the same effect as Nairo, where Whenever you don't really practice practice and you just play 
elite smash and stuff and kind yeah. of just casually play the game for fun and for for content you kind of get the effect of oh i'm i'm not really practicing and so i'm not really fundamentally learning a specific character for a tournament or or matchups so whenever you're you're you're, you're playing you're like who am i feeling right now and <laughs> she probably just was at the moment oh i'm feeling rob right now yeah. rob's feeling really good in my hands right now because i know that that naira does that too whenever he's playing on on stream he's like you know what bowser feels pretty good i'm gonna use bowser in tournament and then he ends up taking sets off squeak leo and stuff like that so that's true um i know that's also why he was playing pit for the, the longest time because he started playing pit on stream he's like you know what it feels really good i'm just gonna start playing pit in tournament and he was just started cooking people so it was, it was probably the same thing with rob he just started playing rob more because he yeah. felt better recently. man was in the mood to kill people at 10 that's all it really was. <laughs> a lot of wish. Okay. It, it's one of those. I, I have always said this that if Zachary was just, an, instead of just being a great player or godlike player, if he was an active player consistently, he'd still be number one in Japan because he'd have a countermeasures to take out like all the time, ready for like players like a Cole and Steve. Or I mean, that's essentially you saying that he would be number one worldwide, I'm, right? I'm, I'm, he honestly, honestly, I could see it. I could see it. That guy's brain is just, it's too big for his very well-constructed head. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's a good comment. Honestly, this, was, this must have been a pretty good top eight for you. I mean, there's a lot of players here that you just love. I was gushing, man. I was gushing. We just talked about Zach Gray. My boy Snow was in that bit too. Snow was probably like one of the bigger surprises for me because I think he he beat Akola in winter. Like Snow, okay. Yeah. Let me let me tell you, let me break it down for you guys on Snow's placement, okay? And I'm gonna put up the results so people can see uh, everything on the screen as well, just to make it a little bit easier. So Snow, as you can see, placed third. You know the names he took out along the way to get there. I'm gonna even slow it down back here. I'm gonna go. All right, Matsunabe eliminated. Okay, Raru. Finally overcame that demon with ages. With ages. With ages. Eliminated. Shoot home. Eliminated. Put a cola in losers bracket. Okay. I mean, damn. You want to talk about an impressive performance? This kid has got next, and I've been saying it for a long time. It called me crazy when I said this kid was the best Mario last year. But I stayed up. I watched it. I saw the games. I saw the pain that he brought. What, yeah. most, what most impressed you guys about Snow's run? You know, actually, when I was watching Snow, yeah. and it, the funny thing is that it shouldn't be impressive, but when I was watching him playing against Akola, and he was playing the last game, game five, in the last hit scenario, and there is that scenario where Akola was throwing out 17 back airs in a row, 17 diamond back airs. Oh. I found it really funny because I feel like all it's like we've seen that scenario so many times, and all of us top players, or most of us players, even probably people in the chat were like, Yeah, we as soon as we saw the second or third back air, we we're like, he's not gonna stop back airing. He's not gonna stop back airing until he either gets hit or he gets a hit. And I, I feel like when I was watching that. I could see in the way that Snow was playing that he also knew, oh, yeah, this motherfucker not going to stop back here, and I'm not going to fuck with this shit. And it's always funny because I, every time I see that scenario, I always see a, a cola come up on top because players either try to challenge the back air, try to find a window where they can put us the back air, or try to go above him, not realizing that, that the back air hits above him, like it hits like, like an up air too, and he always wins in that scenario, or he does get get punished but he expects to get punished and like takes the block and then does minecart or whatever but snow was like no i'm not fucking with that shit i'm just gonna get get around you and just take stage control and then play with my stage control and that's exactly what he did and that's why he ended up winning the game so i think that was probably the most impressive thing was his diligence to not commit whenever he didn't need to commit yeah, and that. wait for his opportunity to get mm -hmm. things that he needed to so for someone like a player like that who seems to be relatively new playing a brawler type character like Mario. That's very important for a character like that. That was very impressive to see for me. 
Yeah, this whole performance was was sensational. And it really reinforced what I already knew. Snow is guy. Look at that. He even after he beat a cola too, it's just a business trip. Light pop off, job ain't finished. Light pop off, job ain't finished. I like that. I like that a lot. Cause it shows restraint. Cause you understand, yeah, took down one of the big dogs, but there's still a couple more in the yard. You know what I'm saying? It's fantastic. Yeah, no. I mean it saves a lot of energy and it keeps your head focused for sure. So you would know about that. But you're funny. You'll just pop off just to make somebody feel bad. <laughs> I def- that's, definitely not the, that's definitely not where my mind goes when I pop off on people. <laughs> I don't pop off like, I hope you feel like shit when you watch this. <laughs> well, you're fucking trash. You're absolutely garbage. You're not supposed to say to everybody. <laughs> Put on the sombrero, start going crazy. That's my that's my <laughs> shtick. Oh my! Speaking God. of sombreros, there's one more person we need to talk about before we talk about the top two, All right. and that is the goat, goat MK baby, K. Leo. What happened to him? Yeah, Meister? I don't know what happened to him. <laughs> I, I told you, I told you, Mia would win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro, Leo was Leo was super cooking, and I, I mean, I I got really upset at that hurt set because he he could have had yeah such. Such a good bracket. He had dude. Mia next, right? If he beat her, he had yeah, Mia he next. He had Mia yes. next, and then after he would a hundred percent beat Mia. Oh, free! And then if he beat Mia, he probably would have played Snow. Which, I mean, I'll be completely honest. I'm not entirely sure if he would have won that because he's um historically struggled with Mario losing sets to Karama um multiple times. Yep, and that's fair. That's a fair super dog. The uh, Mario in Mexico, but. I do feel like overall he was playing very well that tournament that he could have ended up stealing that set from Snow because he did end up beating Karama at some point. Yeah. So he probably would have been went Violet or something and could have beat him. And we could have seen Leo and Grand Finals of that, that tournament. He just ended up getting robbed by Hurt. I would not say that he got robbed. I you don't think that, it was robbery? That, that no. up to was Ch- definitely okay. robbery. Let's see. No, Let he definitely he definitely near hit by the bunch was my wrong. bad. I, I played music during it. Say it again. You put you he what? He definitely near her buck shifted into that up tilt. What I will say is he definitely started to choke at the ending of game five. He stopped grabbing entirely and uh he stopped grabbing hurt, entirely you that. and hurt started just, just to go for jump reads and deserve that. shield and neutral. So like he literally was just shield bombing, which I mean everyone knows if you let like snake shield bomb over and over again and you approach you're just you're either going to get hit out of shield or you're going to hit the bomb and take even more damage and that's exactly what leo was doing and then every time he was in disadvantage state he was scared to go low and then he would just jump high and hurt would hit him with rising nair because hurt's really good at jump reading exactly and ri- rising nair hits like fucking 25 percent. that's what i was about to say i feel like all those rising nares did yeah. twice as much damage as they did. you watch that shit and it's like do 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 you're like, uh, 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 uh. it's just a bad damage bro like, ah, bro stop you hit by those ones and you're like at 80 percent so yeah no i just think he really choked right there i really think if he grabbed him once he like won that you know he didn't take there are times where like a landslide is happening where you need to do something to reset like the situation because you start to feel really pressured. You can either disengage or you can like just hit them once. But like I just feel like he didn't get an opening. And the one time he did get an opening, it put Snake into like a better position because like he up aired him and it's like, okay, well now you gotta deal with this snake cross up C4, cross up grenade, air dodge, cross up. It's like, all right. So like I think he just really needed a singular grab and it would have been fine. It was honestly really well played from her. And I look back at that up tilt. The only reason the up tilt looks weird is because when you get hit, you get sent back into your idle animation, like where you like would have been if you did nothing. Yeah. So like Hurt's like right here and like Leo's right here in his idle animation. But when he nared, he actually put himself next to her. It just doesn't look that way because his his hitbox gets canceled once he gets hit. So like it, it definitely was his own fault for getting hit by that up so but it's like it was also just good on hurt as well yeah for sure i mean i and i hurts a player i really enjoy watching big snake fan no diddy but the way you know leo was playing i was like i just felt <laughs> did you see what he just got arrested for no diddy 
All right. Anyway. Oh um, my god. <laughs> <laughs> he uh yeah, he 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 earned that for sure, man. But I, I like the expression of emotion from Leo after he lost because it just shows me like, dude, he cares so much now. And it's, yep. it's really nice to see that again. Like be pretty passive and nonchalant a couple months ago, but now you can tell he's really refocused and, and reinvented himself uh in a way. I want to get you guys' thoughts about the MK Leo MK, bro, because that joint was cooking. Can we talk about it? Three stock Duragimi in game five of their top eight set. Kinda, kinda clutch. Not gonna lie. You gotta, you gotta pronounce one of these. Dormigi, Dormigi, right, getting closer. There you Dormigi, go. Dormigi, Dormigi, excuse Dormigi. me. Dormigi, excuse me. Honestly, I like Dormigi. That's on fire though. <laughs> I thought I was cooking. Not as much as Leo though, because that Meta Knight was it, bro. Yeah, that that was it, yeah, it, it reversed three stocked Alice. That was mm-hmm. a, that was a crazy. Oh, set I, I went crazy I thought, on that, bro. Don't get me I thought that was it. But when whenever he started getting them reads, whenever he started getting them grabs and started getting them combos, I was like, oh, hold up, wait a second. This looking like kind of Smash Force for a second. We looking this looking like like Leo just came out of Mexico for his first USA tournament playing Mennonite, playing against Mr. R. And that's what that looked like for a second. Mm-hmm. So when, when I saw him hitting hitting those combos, I was like, I feel like he's gonna win this set. And then he ended up winning the set. He actually, I feel like he barely got touched. The last stock. Whenever he started cooking, he did barely get touched. It is weird because I feel like his I feel like his mana Knight's pretty good, obviously, but it just feels like there's like random moments where it's just dog shit, and then he'll be like, "All right, I'm not dog shit anymore," and then he just decides to shit on them for like an extended period of time. And I feel like you see that with more like in his sets where he does good with mana Knight, he's like landsliding. Like he when he beat Dormigi. Yeah, it was crazy because first of all, congratulations to Leo on that. I know he's just historically struggled versus men, and so that was really good. But like versus Dora Migi, it's like he's having matches where he's just shitting on him, and then he barely loses. And then game three, he three stocks him, and it was incredible. Like he was catching jumps and everything. So it was, it was just really good. It was weird how like the landslide works. Maybe that's just Meta Knight's nature. Sure, like how the character works. You know, maybe you lose a stock first, and it's hard to make the comeback. But uh, yeah, no, either way, really good play from Leo. I kind of wish we got to see the Meta Knight versus Akola once Akola clearly adapted. Because in that set, honestly, the, the whole thing with Akola versus Leo is that Akola just simply kept getting hit by Nair and Leo just kept doing it, which obviously that's like Violet's best thing. But even then, it yeah. can't be the only thing you do. So, I mean, it could. I mean, he got away with it for like a year and a half. But like, it's, it can't be the only thing you do now. And uh, literally, if you watch like the first game, there's like a period where like he literally nears like eight times in a row and Akola just gets hit by everyone or at least like the landing hitbox of it. And then by game five, he's like footstooling everyone. And it's like, OK, well, Akola clearly adapted. And Leo, I don't know if you just don't realize he adapted or you're just like, to panic to adapt back right now because mm. we all know leo can adapt but like he was just he was just not doing it you know so maybe he was just panicked maybe it was his only option because pileup's really not that great but um yeah no it was great how akola adapted and i wish we could have saw um meta knight versus steve because i feel like that doesn't sound too bad in terms of when you get the hit i feel like you could kill him pretty easily yeah, I, I guess there's a couple, like, because I was thinking, like, the Meta Knight was so on fire would have been a good option. But I do like the Byleth pick, because I think in Leo's head, he's thinking, like, okay. Because if you saw his top eight loser side qualifier uh, against uh, e- Ikoi? E- Ikoi? Yeah. Okay, yeah. The very solid short player. It's crazy. I was very impressed. Like, Leo went down 2-1 to him, like, with Joker. And he was like, <sighs> took a deep breath. And he, like, kind of social a little bit. I was like, I don't know about Meta Knight here. Because I'm like, shield art just invalidates you. Like, it's just crazy, right? That's what I'm thinking in my head. Like, there's no chance, right? And, like, you die so quickly. But then Byleth came out. And I was like, oh, Lord, have mercy. But I remember the last time he was in Japan, he whipped out Byleth, uh to throw off somebody. I think it was a Donkey Kong player. Or maybe it was France. He was overseas. Either way, Byleth came out to throw somebody for a loop, and it worked because he's in a foreign country, and it's a foreign matchup because who has a Byleth 
up to his MK Leo's level, even if he ain't touched the character in a minute. Nobody! And Goat showed up, and it was a masterpiece. Boy, I tell you, it's like Gordon Ramsay in the cooking, in the kitchen, like a hot knife through butter. He just obliterated. And with that game, he took his confidence, too. I couldn't believe it. It was amazing. I stood up, and I said to myself, I'm not even going to listen to it. I'm just going to appreciate visually what I'm seeing. You watch that setback on my stream. I don't have headphones in. I don't have headphones in. I'm just appreciating the moment. And Goat came through, and he made top eight, and it was a celebration for the ages. You know what I'm saying? He was getting hit by those mental purges, though. I can't believe I even saw those. Listen, it's not about <laughs> what you saw. It's about what happened. Y'all saw the celebration? Nah, yeah. I definitely saw that. <laughs> I also saw the part where you were beating the shit out of the taco. I mean, I was just excited. How could I not be? No, no. I saw no. the part. I, I, I think he's talking about the, the the part where you were beating the shit out at the cactus when he oh, lost. The cactus, the oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was, well, I was pissed. Yeah, I, I was. I was really mad because I was about to work out. I was like, all right, after this set, I'm gonna go work out. And then Leo lost to hurt, and I just felt, I felt demoralized. I felt like, what the? F-? I kept saying to myself. How the fuck did God damn? I kept saying, how up. did you lose that? I kept yes. saying that in my mind. And that's how I knew that he was saying that to himself too. Cause he was he was visually frustrated. He was hitting his head. He had his he he had his hand on his face. He was distressed after losing that match. And I was like, that's yeah, because how do you lose that? And that's how I feel sometimes when I lose stuff like that too. So I was I was running on the treadmill saying, yo, how did Leo lose that for like 20 minutes? Yeah. And then yeah. I, I mean, I know Leo was probably saying that too to himself. You know, shit gets crazy when Leo's animated. <laughs> yeah, right. When he's like in his emotions, it's like, but that's what I was like, okay, good losers run ahead. And he 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 definitely handled business. Um, so we talked about the Bylif, the Meta Knight. The, does this put Joker on the on the back burner or do we think he can run this three character rotation oh, I still well, love I mean, his joker i feel like he went joker in most of the bracket he did play a lot of joker Knight. and that's actually what i was hoping would happen to i actually okay. wished what i in the ideal world in the ideal world i was hoping that when he was playing against uh, Pola, that he did go by lift, and then as soon as he lost the game whether he was up two um or down one he just switched to Joker because he played Aquila at Supernova and he went Joker and it went game five. And at some point he was up to one actually. So it's not like his Joker was, you know, immediately getting shut out. Yep. yep, yeah. yep. He, he, he won a game, lost a game, won game three. And then Aquila took off the match and won game four and five. So it was the a match fourth set. So the fact that Joker was doing pretty well, I feel like you should have had a little bit more confidence in your Joker going into that set. Joker, I, I understand wanting to play Byleth because he lost the set and like so it's like, okay, well, Byleth, Byleth is a sword character. I can outrange Steve and keep him out. So try it out. But whenever it stops working, like Light says, you have to realize that your opponent is adapting. It feels like he just didn't real, realize it. So yeah. if you feel like you're not adapting, you can just switch it up by trying something different. Yeah. I, yeah, I, no, I, you're completely right about that. Yeah, I think because the first two games were like so like, Dominant, dominant on Leo's part, and then like he got that sick arrow clip too. He was just he was just feeling the bile of way too hard. So I think he just couldn't bring himself to to change tempo and, and pick up Joker. Cause in that super nova set, he was up two one with his Joker. So I know it's very doable. And if you give Zachary a different look, or excuse me, not Zachary, if you give a cola a different look, it might indeed, like you said, catch him off guard. And I do give a cola credit because if you look at games one and two and then three, four, and five, it is a different animal. Like he clearly you know, he, he adapted very well well to the Nair spam and placements from Leo. Wasn't getting hit by like the last hit a lot and stuff like that. So I was like, okay, I give a cola credit. Like he's obviously not just like carried by Steve. This guy is a genuinely good player. Like we've always said on this podcast, like is a very good player. So kudos to him. But uh, next time you go against Goat, it's over for you, bro. I can already feel. We already in the lab. We already working on things you never even seen before. I want you to understand. You never even seen what we got cooking up for you. Okay. The masterpiece. Uh, but going beyond MK Leo's sensational performance at fifth, Zachary's sensational performance at fourth, and Snow's sensational performance at third, we have to address the top two finishers of the event. Mia and Akola. Uh, 
A little bit of a different look in this grand finals, though, guys. Did you uh, did you like Akola bringing out the Pyramithra uh, to take on Mia? I mean, he did win the first set of grand finals, forced to reset Mia, would eventually clutch it out. But I don't know. I actually thought it was a pretty hype grand finals just because, like, yeah, it's two staples in Japan. But, man, it was just such a different look. I'm just surprised that he didn't try Steve at all. Like, mm. obviously, the Mithra played very well. I'm just genuinely surprised by it because, like, Maybe it's because they play so often now, you know, like every grand finals that he feels that he can just do that. He's like, oh, I'll try next time, you know? <laughs> so okay. like they play so often, they're always there. But um, I don't know. I just felt like I just have I just have a weird thought about counter pickers because I'm not a counter picker and I'm mm-hmm. a solo main. I wanted Mia to win that set. I like seeing Mia win more than I like seeing Nicola win just because. I feel like Mia was the one up and coming, and it always felt like that he was eventually going to be better than uh, Akola. I always felt like Mia was going to eventually be better. And I'm not saying he is yet, but he has been taking more tournaments, so I like to see that. But uh, I don't know. You know, when Mia was getting his ass by Akola, you know, he stuck it out with Game & Watch, and he figured it out. So I kind of wanted to see some Steve and see if he could figure it out. Regardless, the Aegis was playing very well. It adapted very well. He was getting some early ass kills. This man loves down till up air. Like he was, he probably got like four kills with that in that set, which is a lot to get with down till up air, considering Game and Watch is like constantly jumping, you know. So him finding those were really good. His, it's definitely different. Like his Aegis is definitely different. It's very unique, but it's it's good. It's crazy how good it's gotten in the past year. I mean, it's been good enough to beat Spargo and take a set off Mia. Yeah, yep. but. Even so, Mia taking it and it just played it really well. Yeah. I mean, when it comes to mine, a very clear reason why I would assume that he decided to go Aegis against Mia because he's been losing like the last couple of times, the last couple of sets to him. And he he's probably like, well, Spargo plays Mia. Anytime Spargo plays Mia, he always goes Aegis. Spargo has never lost to Mia. To my knowledge, pretty sure. Spargo's mm-hmm. never lost to Mia and he's always gone Aegis. So... Mm-hmm. He's like, I mean, if Spargo can do it with, with, with Aegis, there has to be something there. And he's he's been playing Aegis for a very long time. It's, Aegis is very good. It's, it is very different, but it's like all the fundamentals are actually there. Yeah. Um. So the fact that he saw that and ended up taking a set off Mia the first time he tried it, I think is like a, like it shows that there is something there and that it can be something that's pretty consistent because yeah. I, I'm not entirely sure how Steve really does against Game of Watch, how that matchup really is, but I know that he just definitely does beat Game of Watch and it's probably one of Game of Watch's worst matchups. Well, um, I, I can tell you that Steve is the best character in the game, so I'm sure he does quite fine. Yeah, he, he probably does <laughs> fine, but I, I would to our definitely cameras? assume... Oh. Huh? Never mind. What? My my camera was weird on the other side. Continue, continue. Oh. Well, yeah, like I, I, like I wouldn't. Steve is the best character in the game, so he probably did pretty well against, or decently well against Game of Watch. But Game of Watch is also one of the best characters in the game, so it wouldn't surprise me if Game of Watch had a winning matchup on Steve because of his advantage state and everything and his hitboxes. Yeah. Um, but I just find it pretty funny that, like, we were talking about it last week about how Mia has been not doing so well and how Akola has not been doing too well. And then they're like, don't worry, we'll just come back to Japan, make a random P tier, S tier, and then we'll end up, you know, <laughs> giving us giving us some points. And then it's funny that, <laughs> that they made it to Grant and they took sets off of each other. <laughs> so that they All could... part of the plan. Bro, I'm telling <laughs> I know you, man. They... It's obviously not like that, but it's really funny that that that, that, that happened. And it's even funnier that this week that we talked about that they could just spawn S tiers. There's another S plus tier happening this weekend, and Nicole is going to that. Mia's not going to that funny enough. Bro, I mean, Mia won the tournament, so he's probably like, you know what, Nicole, you, you can have this one. Get those points, bro. Just win this one. I'll, I'll take the P tier. You can take the S plus tier. You know what? I made top eight. I made top eight at Supernova. You did it. I'll let you get this one. So, Bro. I mean, that's it, it's just funny. It, it's obviously not like that. It's just really funny that they have a lot of S tiers back to back like that whenever they want. And it can be a narrative that that could be something that is like actually just a joke because it, it's actually like that. So, yeah. Just, but yeah, like Grant was very good. Grant was a very fun watch. And um, the, I think they're, they are going to be more consistent whenever they start um, coming to American tournaments. 
again because I I do feel like they are grinders. They don't like losing, and I feel like because they don't like losing, and they also you know essentially mainly play for pride. Whenever they lose, they're like, we don't want to travel across the world 12, 14 hours to end up just losing to anybody and not even making top eight. So I feel like they're definitely going to pick up the slack and like start wanting to do well to represent their country across the seas because the narrative of like fighting the NA uh, uh, Avengers is a real thing. I know they definitely see that too. Japanese Twitter definitely sees everything too. So I know they want to be everybody in the NA Avengers too and just. It it definitely has gotten to a point where we are in a region war where it's like, the, is NA better than Japan or is Japan better than NA? And I know they take pride in that, too, because whenever Spargo went to Japan and beat Okola, Okola was really upset because he wanted to defend his, his country. And then Okola beat Spargo next time. Okola was very happy. He didn't even care that he lost to Mia because he beat Spargo and defended his, his country. So it is a definite real thing in the community now where it's like we're in the era and the arc of NA versus Japan, essentially. Damn. Well, Isn't it amazing at the craft how I crafted that narrative and you guys are just taking it and using it to get to better yourselves? I, I think I deserve a little pat on the back. Light. Anyways, um yeah. <laughs> Nah, you did good, Ben. You did good. <laughs> nah, I was going to say, uh, yeah, I mean, you're right. The narrative is real. But the way it's looking by the end of the season, I think top two are going to be in North America again. It's kind of crazy to say, considering how dominant Japan was for like a good while. Uh, I, obviously, number two is still debatable. But as of right now, I think it's pretty clear that Spargo's number one. Yeah. Uh, Sonic's in my head could be number two. But I don't I don't know if you could get it's like I don't know if you can get number two from getting second at everything when some people are still winning majors, you know? So I mean I would argue I would argue the latter that theoretically because I was actually talking about it with my girlfriend and she was like if you get second every single tournament and the f- people that get first aren't getting first all of the time, that could honestly theoretically uh, amount to you being the best player in the world because you're consistently placing over most people. And people that are getting first aren't getting first so con- con- consistently. Now it's obviously, it's like Spargo's got first the last two tournaments, like the first two tournaments that he's been to here. Um, but last season, it was like he was getting second over a lot of people. And it was like Spargo's winning a tournament and didn't win. Akola's winning a tournament and didn't win. Mia's winning yeah. a tournament and didn't win. But like Sonic is consistently getting second, outplacing those players, which is why he ended up getting getting second. And it it could honestly be a point where it's like somebody could win a major and then that could be the be the only major that they win. But then they get like seventh or fifth or ninth. And Sonic is always getting second and second and second. And he's always consistently in the top two, where it's like all the other people have too many low lows that Sonic is just over mount or overcoming them and his consistency is showing that like he is consistently placing higher than all these people which shows that he's first which is why like, I could definitely see him being second like him getting second could show that he's getting second the only reason why we don't say that he's second or you say like he could not be second is because of like the fact that yeah there's a lot of people that are winning majors but if it was the same person winning a major and he was getting second, he would obviously be number two. But since well, it's other people winning majors, or it could be other people winning, winning majors, I think that's why you're like, I mean, I don't know if he's number two because there's too, too many other people winning. Yeah, well, see, that's the thing. I also, I'm on the opposite side of things. I don't think you should be number two if uh, you're not winning majors because obviously we're not valuing how important it is to win a major, I feel like, because... If you are winning two majors, if you are winning two majors in a season and you're like getting fifth or seventh for the rest of the season, I think that should, bro, a major win is not like, I feel like even in the last season we saw it, which like I, I said, like Tweak and Hurt, like Tweak won two majors and he was like under Hurt. And I think that's insane to me because I think, I think winning a major is insanely difficult and should be very highly valued. 
Like that is incredible. It is so hard to do. And I mean, Sox is a good example of that. Like he is, he is consistently second, but his mentality obviously changes. Cause I think, I actually think that he should be like the best player in the world, if not on the two skill wise. But I mean, his mentality clearly changes where he gets to grand finals because nothing major is such a big deal. And he tends to crumble and he plays differently. and He overthinks shit because it is that highly valued to all of us to win a major. There are many players who even say, I'd rather win majors than like just be consistent, like top. Like you'd rather win a major and then get 65th at another tournament than get like top five, like three times. Winning a major is that big of a deal. And I feel like you got Spargo here who won two majors. And if a Cole wins two majors, I'm going to be like, yeah, I think he should be rated higher because the dude won fucking two majors. You know, that's so crazy to me. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, if Sonics gets like a major win under his belt, then I think even one, I think it'd be like, oh yeah, he should definitely be number two. Cause then you got like seven seconds and then one first place. I like that. I like that a lot because yeah, I mean, he really just needs, if it's a string of like seconds and then in his case, like a third at Riptide, you just you need that one win to solidify, bro. Like a uh, uh, board across of a bunch of seconds to me doesn't match up to somebody's like first place and then like top eights because there's yeah. so much to be said about closing out the event, bro. You get there and you close it out. You get to the Super Bowl. No one remembers second place. OK, yep. nobody. You know what I mean? It's in anything. Nobody remembers who was the runner up at the Royal Rumble. You know what I mean? You become like, a meme. Exactly, bro. And you don't you know. And he's embraced that, and it's funny. But yes, you have to get that first place to solidify. And just like Japan spawns events out there and gives plenty of chances to Mia and Akola to do that interchange, hopefully we continue to see those here in NA. I think Cirque is about to be really, really big. Hopefully, Ellen, uh, Let's Make Moves Miami is very big as well. And of course, we have our Invitational. So there's a lot of stuff, but consistency does matter. I have a stat here that has Mia's results since May. Second place, and these are all like S tiers and P tiers. Second place at Delta 8. First place at Kag- uh, Kagaribi. Ninth place at Sumibato. First place at Kings of the Fields. Whoa, what the heck? Uh, 13th at Sumibato. <laughs> <laughs> first place. No, actually, I got first there. Yeah, low key, bro. I was in grand finals. Uh, <laughs> first place at Kowloon. 13th at Supernova. <laughs> First at Maya Suma, 13th at Riptide, and then first just now uh, at his at that event we just saw him. Those were all this season? Uh, well, since May. So some of them might oh, have been okay. a little bit behind. Yeah. No, but yeah. Um, Mia does have a major win. I wouldn't say his results have been incredibly impressive, at least in America this season. But, I mean, if he were to win another one, he were to stay consistent, which I'm sure he will do if he stays in Japan. Um, then... I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being real with you, bro. Like, being real, bro. I'm telling you, man. Those dude, this dude was on a plane. He was like, "Wow, that did not go." Him and her, they were on the plane together. They were like, "Wow, we didn't top eight the last two majors." And Nicole was like, <laughs> "Don't worry, I've already set up three more." <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> but, nah. But honestly, all jokes aside, incredible event. Definitely worth losing some sleep over for sure. And I hope you yeah. guys all appreciate it. Big again, congratulations to Mia and uh, Cole. Before is we move on, though, no, no please, please. I, 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 I do want to mention that I, I think one of the things that is kind of hindering Sonics from being number one, which is something that Spargo has embraced too, is actually going to Japan to play because mm. I don't think he's been to Japan to play either. And Spargo has, Leo has, and like obviously all the Japanese players are coming over here too. Um, Zamba went to at one point and went on a tear. Yeah, exactly. So, um, I I really do want to see how Sonics does against all of the Japanese players, not just the top Japanese players, but like also like the high level Japanese players and like getting the Japanese players to get into top thirty two. Because obviously Sonics is like a very con- consistent player, but they are very experienced with the Sonic matchup because they have um Sonic players that traveled more tournaments there with Ken and Taike, I believe is a Sonic player. Um, I, I, I just think that whenever you are at the point where you are in contention for being the best, even if, if you're not someone like Zamba or Leo, like going to Japan is always going to be something that benefits you as, as a player. And it's something that I feel like you do have to do if you want to be the best in the world. And honestly, obviously 
Sonics wants to be the best in the world. That's the goal. Yep. So to see that there's a lot of pizzas that are happening in Japan, it's pretty surprising to not see him have been to one of them even yet. So I hope that at some point, maybe the next one that they have, he does end up going. And I think it would be pretty cool to see how he does there. Yeah, I mean, it might be a little different for him as well. I mean, he also is in college and shit like that. And, you know, he's actually a pretty busy person from what it seems. But I'm sure I'll make it out there eventually. If you want my opinion, I think if he goes to Japan, he just wins. And if he doesn't win the first of that, I think he wins the next three. Because the dude is the type to be like, okay, let's go to Japan. Oh, let's say I lost to Shulk and Pac-Man. All right, I studied it. And I studied every single one of you who was in top eight that weekend. And then I'm going to win. I don't. He doesn't. He doesn't. The, the, the thing is, bro, I don't. I just don't think that he would lose considering his history with Akola and Mia and his adaption to snow. I already think I think Shutan would be one of the best people to stop him. Like, even if he does study him. Like, him losing to Shutan made a lot of sense to me, and I'm sure mm. it made a lot of sense to everyone else who watched it, because Sonics does not like Aegis, and even if he did, it's just like, like you said, they're very experienced versus Sonic, and Shutan's just goaded, bro. He really is just that great. But, um, yeah, no, I feel like, I don't know, there's no Spargo there, man. There's yeah. no Spargo. I don't no, think no, yeah. someone's, I don't think anyone's going to stop him there. I do generally think, skill-wise, that he is number two right now, if not number one, he just needs to clear it out. So, like, I wouldn't be surprised if he just goes there. And I mean, yeah, I I agree. I just also think that one of the reasons why Spargo has been doing very well too is because he's embraced that going to Japan really does help you. And if you think about it, he went to J- Japan. He went from Smash Factor where he got like fifth, losing to me, and then losing to Shattuck, and then immediately after that, he went to J- Japan. He, I don't know who he lost to in winners, but he lost to a Cole in losers. And then right after that, he won the next two majors that he's what he's he's been to. So it's like going to Japan really like as much as people like say, like, yeah, like. um, You don't have to travel to be that much better or like whatever they say about it, like you, you, you can't travel to be better. It does help. It doesn't help. It doesn't matter. I feel like the results are there and showing that when you do go to Japan and you come back, you, th- there is consistently people that are doing better. Like it's happened with Zamba. It's happened with Leo too. It's happened with Meister. It's yeah. happened with Spargo, obviously. So I feel like if Sonic wants to be the best in the world, just take what, the, the results of what's been working and seeing that people obviously like you um, you you might be right he is a pretty busy busy person he does have school and stuff he has a girlfriend he has a life and he's still doing very very well he's still getting second at like every single tournament mm-hmm. but whenever you if you do want to commit to being the best player you do have to make sacrifices like going to a completely, completely different country to learn a thing or two and i do think that sonic would be someone to not lose consistently i do feel like he could lose once or twice if he goes to like four or five tournaments there because that's just the nature of Japan. It's happened to Spargo. It's happened to Leo. It's happened to Akola and Mia. They've lost to random people too. That's just the culture over there. Or that's, that's just like the level of play over there. But I feel like for someone like Sonics, the way that he studies, that would help boost him even more because he would have something even more to study than to just study the American play styles that he's playing against. He would be able to study like, the completely different play styles that he has to play against in Japan. Whether he does win or lose, even if he wins and it's pretty close and he clutches it out, you can still study that and gain something from that. So I feel like that's something that would very would help him very much, which is why I feel like he definitely should go if he wants to be the best in the world. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like that. I mean, it's all about taking that next step. And if you do, like Light said, he's very busy. But if you are a lot of the time, yeah, I think he should go over there. I think he'd have a good time. And, you know, there are some some tough folks to play over there and someone like Shutan who's a good combination of Aegis and you know Aegis and Olimar to, to threaten him would be fun. Akola is only getting better and better with his Aegis so definitely some match fun matches I could see uh, happening over there. Uh, before we close out uh, on Umibora completely though or yeah Umibora shout outs uh, I want to give a shout out to Akakitsu for getting 7th place that was pretty sick um, I think that's definitely worth knowing him top 8ing and then uh, Raru actually getting ninth, so he's missing top eight. So that was kind of crazy how how that uh, worked out. But yeah, good tournament overall, and can't wait for the next one. 
Ain't got to wait too much longer because it's literally next week. Uh, there we go. So I ain't good. staying up for that one. Yeah, I might. I might be a little busy at TwitchCon, but we'll see. Um, there was another event that happened. I don't know if you guys watched anything from UFA. Um, Crepe Sale won. Siski got second. Gluto third. Lugi. Gluto third. Gluto third. I think that's like the most right home thing about is Gluto getting third place, which was a little surprising. Double eliminated by Siski, actually. Who, uh, yeah, fa- it was pretty crazy because I saw the, the Luma rank panel. You know, like whenever they make top eights or they or top eight is solidified, and then mm-hmm. the first matches of top eights, they say like all the records that people have against e- each other. It said that Gluto was 12 4 with Siski. So he's won 12 sets mm-hmm. and he lost four sets. So I was pretty surprised to see that he just won. He lost the next two sets because of how dominant he's been against Siski. Yeah, that was a. I blame the hand problems. Well, I I don't know. I heard he was back on his other controller now, or his normal controller. So I don't I don't know what to believe. Like, right from that performance where he beat Leo. The, the no one can beat my go. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But yeah, I mean, this was you know, I mean, Rafflo and Big Boss at ninth, a little surprising. They didn't they didn't top eight. Tarek at thirteenth, a little low for him. Mister R seventeenth actually prompted Mister R to make a tweet that hey, I'm retiring from this game. It sucks. So that's what he said. <laughs> it wasn't quite that direct, but. Uh, you it's know. okay, guys. We're gonna see Big Boss in Dubai this weekend. I think honestly, <laughs> there is a Dubai tournament going on, like or Redad. It's, it's something over there in that part of the world's happening. Maybe he will sashay over there. He's actually that. TOing it. I could believe <laughs> it. This is how he operates, man. It's crazy. But he's the big boss. Good job, Crepe Saleh, for winning. Um, that guy is counterpick master, bro. He plays a bunch of characters and gets the job done. So that's kind of cool to see, actually. Uh, glad that event still went well. Um, few more things to talk about. Really, really, just one more that I just thought was so scuffed and such a questionable decision to do. But they did it, so I'm gonna give them some love. Did you see Zap? You see Zap win the oh, qualifier. Yeah. Zap won yeah. the qualifier, the Luminosity Invitational qualifier, which took place online, an online qualifier for an offline event. Invitational, little, little strange. He took it over Beast Mode Paul and Grands. Not gonna lie, but was that H Box's idea? Because I saw he yeah. made a tweet. Of course it was. That was a shit idea. Honestly, congratulations to Zap because I mean you deserve it. You want it, uh, but I still think it was a shit idea for the simple fact. That didn't they make a tweet literally saying like they were going to draw from a poll from people that they like, like got yeah. fan voted, right? Yeah. So it's yeah. like, bro, you can't. You can't back out on that, man. Like, on top of that, you made an event for a bunch of people that you felt were, like, qualified to be in your offline event, including your five players, of course. Um, But it just feels like, you know, that just wasn't the way to go about it. I just don't like online qualifiers unless, like, all the spots are online qualifiers, I guess. Like, if all the events are online qualifiers for one event, then fine, have at it. But I don't like it otherwise. But again... That's not to take away from Zap. Congratulations yeah, to them. Yeah, we like Zap. We got no problem. We like HBox too. We got no problem with these guys. It's the idea that we take issue with. Because I, I thought it was just like, it was such a weird idea. It was just like, this is the online, online qualifier last minute. And I don't know, man. I, I just personally wasn't a fan of that at all. Um, I don't think anyone was. Yeah, but, you know, it is what it is. I, one of the things I had an issue with, and again, it's not a problem with HBox. It was the decision making of Lumi, and you guys know I don't bite my tongue. I don't care if I'm on the team or not. I love the team, but I'm going to talk my, talk my piece. Why is an Luminosity qualifier for a Luminosity event not being streamed on somebody from Luminosity's channel? Tony, Mars, Tweak, myself, any of us, you could have put it on the channel there. I did not Great understand point. that at all. It made zero sense. I actually didn't even think about that. I thought that was just bad faith. I did not like that at all. And I'll talk about that at the Invitational, whoever I need to talk about that. The rich get richer. That cannot happen again. That's completely unacceptable. Um, Yeah. No, yeah, I get that. Um, That being said, I am looking forward to this event. I mean, I've expressed my criticisms towards the first event. And Luminosity has said that they, like, put efforts in to make this they listen. better. They listen. So 
I'm pretty excited for it. You know, yeah, I'm not one to talk shit about an event and then not like be like, oh, no, fuck you. You know, like I, <laughs> I have pretty high hopes for this. Uh, not yeah. a great start with that invitational. I mean, with that uh, online qualifier, but the event itself, I'm looking forward to. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And who knows? Maybe maybe Zap will kill it, man. Look, I can tell you some people who might not look be looking forward to it. Did you see this article that got written by Esports Illustrated? Did you see this? Have you seen this? Have you checked it out? Yes, I read it. I I glanced over it. Smash is finally back in the news, baby. But uh, for some interesting reasons, so somebody write an article. Luminosity says no to Sonic and Steve at the LG Invitational. LG Invitational has not invited certain pros, and fans think it's because of who they main in Ultimate. I'll tell you right now, it probably the hell is, okay? <laughs> By default, we have Sonics and we have Meister, two people I enjoy watching, but maybe that's not the overwhelming majority, and that's okay. You know, I saw D, his tweet is featured in here, Wrath and Onan not getting into the LG Invitational because the characters they play is extremely effed up. Who made these decisions? Probably the sponsors. The Buzz. I know what it's like to lose opportunities for playing boring characters, and I sympathize with Wrath and Onan. But I understand LG has to make their tournament as fun as possible. I want to propose a question. Would we care that much if the event didn't count for rankings? That's a good question by the buzz. Would we care as much? Do we Wait. care now? Wait, so why are they saying like specifically Wrath and Onan? Because were... they weren't invited to play in the bracket. Like you remember, you got like a DM. To play oh, the the, okay, that makes it. sense. Yeah. Um, which, that makes sense. Yeah, I'm surprised Rath. Actually, I didn't even think about that. I'm surprised Rath was not in there at all. Rath is an online funny. terror, so I am a little. Wait, you had a, Wait, did you have to get qualified for the online? Bracket? No, they just. They just. They. The I'm, DMs I'm they be wanted. Completely tra- transparent. They just asked me. They just DM'd me and were like, "Yo, do you want to play in the LCQ?" I was like, "Sure." Wait, That's wait. It. The LCQ wasn't just for anyone to join. Nope. It was. It was an invitational base. Yeah. They asked. What the they, fuck? they. They would have took forever though. People. To be they fair, it took forever. Pre- okay, so it's essentially what they <laughs> then don't do it. If it would have taken forever, then don't do it. That just it's, wasn't the way to go about it. Essentially, what they kind of did was they at first said that, "Hey, we're going to um, we're we're we dropped or somebody dropped from the event, so we're going to take the most um and the most wanted people from our comment section in this tweet." And make a poll for them. And essentially, I'm essentially what I'm pretty sure what they did is that instead of making a poll for from for them, they took all the suggestions from the comments and then asked them to be in an invitational instead, rather than actually just like making a invitational themselves, like a, a legit one. So I don't know if Wrath was often in the comments or if Onan was. I'm pretty sure they probably were. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what they did. Like it, it wasn't like an open tournament or anything, or you could like apply to get into it. There, there was nothing like that. You, they literally just ask you if you want to be in it. You, you couldn't ask them. They ask you. Yeah. I mean, you could ask them by saying like, "Hey," like tweeting at them and being like, "I want to try it," but they still got to pick you. You no, just ask no. in, in a tweet. But I, I didn't ask nobody. They just DM me. I was like, "Yo, do you want to play in this invitational?" I was like, well, I think it's because sure. like people were commenting under their initial post, like who they like to see. So they're like, oh, yeah, okay, exactly. That's like, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah that is. I so so like I'm that. I'm not sure if Wrath or Onan were really in the comments because I mean I I bet a lot of people wouldn't really want to see them. I'm very that's happy. Re- I'm still at the point where like I'm qualified. Like people are just inviting me. I'm very happy about that because this all sounds like some bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean honestly, I'm pretty. I didn't want to play in it. I played in it just because I realized that sometimes I feel like I should have not played in it to make a statement and then make it made a tweet about it. But I realized, bro, you can't give up your own opportunity. Yeah, like. I don't think I'm going to win. I'm being completely honest. I I didn't think I was going to win, but I was like, there's always a chance that I could. And then I could go to the Invitational and I could have have a good time. So I was like. I'll play in it, whatever. I don't like it. I could have 
took the stance of like, oh, I'm going to be the one to say no and be like, this is not okay, and try to set a precedent for all of us in this mass community to have better tournaments and have better things in our lives. But I was like, slow down, no, man. I was just calm down, Mr. President. You didn't do that. <laughs> yeah, you didn't make that decision. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. But, so I was like, uh, you know what? I'm not going to be that guy. I'm just playing it because nobody really gives a fuck at the end of the day. Again, I still have high hopes for the invitation itself. I'm really hoping that it's good. You know, it will. Be. I like to. I love. I love to see improvement in the community, and I'm not going to just scoff at that. That being said, to the Buzz's tweet, if we think it, like people would care if there was no ranking involved, no. We wouldn't care if there was no rating involved. In fact, we would even watch. Like, <laughs> we're not gonna watch the. I don't think a lot of people would watch the event if it's not ranked. Who cares what the characters are at that point? You know. Mm. I don't even, bro, I mean, ima- imagine, cool imagine tweak watch. there. Imagine tweak there if the event didn't count. Tweak's playing Sephiroth. He's no. He's tweak's going King K. Rule Banjo. Bro, yeah, and he might win. <laughs> like, <laughs> this dude's insane. My he point might is, win because nobody else would care. <laughs> I know it's the whole thing about invitationals not counting for ranking, but I'm going to be real with you. If invitationals don't count for ranking and they don't have summon money, I don't care about them. Like, well, Luckily, they do count and they will have money. So stay locked yeah. in. It's going to be uh, a good time. But like, no, I mean, look, I'm going to be honest, like on the article thing, on the not being invited thing. Look, guys, like there's plenty of tournaments out there. There's plenty of open brackets like it is what it is. If your biggest problem in your life is you didn't get invited to compete for a chance to go to a Smash Invitational, you got a pretty good life. It's okay. It'll be okay. If um, your biggest problem is that your favorite player didn't get invited, then you, know, you got not, a pretty good it, it, it does. I mean, I hear it. Like, it does suck from that perspective. I can empathize with that for sure. But, dog, you, like, when y'all, some of y'all, when you play, and this is more so geared to, to Wrath, like, dog, you see them comments, bro. <laughs> Come on, bro. You read that chat sometimes. You, you know, you know what, what you're, you're doing, doing, bro. You know what you're doing. The life you chose, man. <laughs> the life you chose. You get some wins. You get some good wins for sure. And you definitely have some nice placements. But, hey, man, it's not going to always uh, go in your way for sure. But I, I, one thing before we go, I also think, like, I don't even think I don't even think Onan and Raz say anything. So I'm not even talking to them. But I do think th- the thought of, like, I should be here is a little untitled. Like, if you want to be somewhere qualified, but, like, you'd get invited if you were just top painting all the normal brackets, you know what I mean? Yeah. So in a sense, in a, in, a. in a sense, you can qualify, you know, you just qualify by being good in normal brackets. So like, if you want to be in that bad, it's like, just qualify. No one, no one has the right to bitch if you didn't get voted in for summit. So it's like, just qualify, you know, it's a tough path. Cause then you can make the argument. Oh, well, you know, X, Y, and Z, they don't top eight everything. And they're still invited. It's just like, yeah, but then you have to go down to those little minute details that <laughs> you, and you know the details. Those, those people, there's history in that. Like, people yeah, who don't exactly. like top eight everything, they probably were very consistent yeah. at one point or just started their fall off, you know, to the yeah. point where it's like that. At the end of the day, an invitation is whoever people want it and invite, you know? Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's whoever is event it is, they can make the decisions. And, you know, you can choose to watch, choose to support. It, that is your decision, just like it's their decision. So. It is what it is. Hopefully you guys decide to uh, like this video because I thought this was a really good episode of Lights Out for sure. Episode number 75. For 76, we have a huge announcement to break to you guys. It's going to be awesome. The team will be expanding a little bit and we'll get into that next week. I'm excited to share those details with you. But in the meantime, what are you doing to us? Quiet. Shout outs to the GOAT. MK Leo was smoking on that Japan pack and boy, did it taste good. That's my goat right there. You already know. And for you amigos, like, comment, subscribe, because we always bring the vibes. Salud. We'll see you next time.